Am I the a-hole for calling out my future sister-in-law after she compared being pregnant to my fiancé going through cancer treatment? My fiancé Joe is undergoing treatment for bone cancer in his leg and pelvis. He had surgery and is now doing chemo. His family has been supportive, except for his sister Alexis. She has a two-year-old that is seven months pregnant, and she often accuses Joe of using his illness as an excuse to not help drive her places because she doesn't drive or watched a toddler. She got upset when he wouldn't give her money that was raised to help him while he's out of work, going so far as to make her own online fundraiser, and she would post the link anytime his mother shared a link to his. Mind you, Alexis is not working right now, but she lives with her mother who provides for her every need. I've tried to be patient knowing she's in a difficult position being a single mom of soon-to-be two little ones. Regardless, my frustration boiled over yesterday and I would like some feedback. Their mom hosted a combined baby shower for Alexis and birthday party for the two-year-old. Joe wanted to go, but before guests arrived, he started feeling pretty tired and sick and went to his mom's room to lay down. He slept through the whole event and woke up shortly after we had cleaned up. Family members had been asking where he was and expressed concern when I said he was upstairs sleeping. I don't think Alexis liked that people were asking about him, so when he woke up, she complained that he got to take a nap while she handled everything. Which wasn't true because me, her mom and her best friend took care of everything. Alexis just helped with cleanup. I didn't know what to say at the time, so I kept quiet. Joe, for the most part, ignored her as well, so I followed his lead. The following day, yesterday, she posted pictures of the event and the first line of the post said, Thank you to everyone who woke up yesterday and chose to celebrate my sons and me. I texted her, What's the first part of your post supposed to mean? You know, Joe wouldn't have missed his nephew's party for the world. He's exhausted. She said, Cry me a river. I'm tired and hurting too, but you don't see me napping during important family events. I sent her pictures of him throughout his treatment, sleeping in the chemo chair, sleeping in the car, pushing through physical therapy, etc., and I sent the following. I don't doubt that you're tired, but Joe is sick and literally just trying to live. I hope someday you learn to support your brother instead of being jealous, indignant, or whatever it is. I sent screenshots to their mom and asked her to talk some sense to Alexis. After which, Alexis texted me one more time calling me an a-hole, among other names. Now that I've had time to cool off, I'm wondering if it was even my place to call her out. Joe was ignoring her. Their mom was ignoring her, so maybe I should have to. She just frustrates me so much. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Having witnessed someone battling cancer and chemo, Christ, I can't say what I'd like to say about the sister-in-law. Seriously, what a witch. My mom is a breast cancer survivor. It's so hard. I hope you and your loved one are doing okay. I would have went even further and publicly asked why she's so jealous of a cancer sufferer getting attention that competing with a sick man makes her trashy. I watched my ex-mother-in-law do chemo three times. I've seen how tired and wrecked people are after those treatments and wouldn't wish that on anyone and would never dream of trying to say someone is just using it to get out of things. Not a hole. I'd post on her post a reply saying something like, Thanks to everyone who had heart to express concern for my husband who is exhausted from his chemo treatments. His love for his family got him to the party, but sometimes the treatments are too much on him and he needs to rest. This is the way. Alexis is a grade A witch with main character syndrome. Sorry, too much emotion I know. Not a-hole. I was a mom of five when I found out I had colon cancer. I know people are different, but I can assure you that none of my pregnancies compared to cancer. I hope you're okay and doing well now. For people with complaining mindset, a pinprick is definitely worse than stage 4 cancer. Hope you're doing good. Sending you hugs. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to celebrate my brother's recovery because he was driving while drunk? Plus update. Original post. I-19 female, heavy brother, 21 male who has been spoiled rotten. He gets away with anything. He doesn't listen or take orders from anybody. And my parents don't seem to care about his attitude. There's been many fights about this. My brother was driving under the influence and crashed into two cars on the highway. He was in the hospital for a good while. Don't remember exactly how long. 
Everyone was worried about his condition, and each day has just been non-stop worrying about whether he was going to be okay. There's been a couple fights, because my parents said the incident didn't matter too much. As long as the people involved in the crash didn't die, I could not believe it. Well, he was able to recover and my parents wanted to throw a party to celebrate his recovery. I was happy he was okay, but I have no sympathy for drunk drivers. My childhood friend died from a drunk driving accident and I had to go into therapy for it. I had a problem with this because it felt like they didn't care that two people got hit. I voiced this opinion and I got crucified basically. My parents said I was a bad sister for not being happy for my brother. I said I was happy, but it's like they didn't even care. And the reason he's allowed to get away with crap like this is because they keep filling his thick head with illusions. I'll admit, I got a tiny bit emotional because I remembered my friend's death, so I just went to my room and slammed the door. My dad came banging on my door yelling, I hope you're freaking happy. I deeply regret even saying anything now. But am I wrong for thinking it's weird and disrespectful that they don't even care about the situation just because nobody died and not wanting to celebrate my brother? Edit. By recovery, I mean in terms of injuries. As far as I know, my brother has been charged. I'm currently on the way to my boyfriend's house now because I can't stand my family. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole, but I would have attended and gave him a toast. To my brother, the drunk who nearly killed two people and himself. Make sure to include the enablers. Um, I mean, parents. Yes, to my brother, who narrowly escaped death, who included strangers in his narrow escape. My brother, who drove drunk, who very nearly killed two people who were just going about their daily lives. And to my parents who think celebrating this, when they know full well my best friend died at the hands of someone just like my dear brother. A drunk who got behind the wheel and didn't care about the lives they tore apart. Long may we celebrate his reckless behavior. Drink up, because we all know how much my brother loves his drinks. Can you imagine what Opie's parents would have done to her after that? Horrified a father would speak to his child the way he did Opie. Sad. They have pretty much ruined their son by never holding him accountable. Bad parenting 100%. Opie's not a hole at all, but her family is. Absolutely not a hole. I am disgusted with your parents especially, since they have to have known about the circumstances of your friend's death. And they should understand why you feel the way you do about this. Right? The words my mother used when discussing drunk driving with me as a teenager were, If you ever got a DUI, do yourself a favor and don't call me. You'll be safer in jail than out on bail. I have multiple relatives who have lost licenses for drunk driving. And I cannot for the life of me understand why it's not a bigger deal than it is. Let alone why my mom and some other relatives actually go out of their ways to help the drunk drivers get groceries. And similar stuff that's harder to do now without a car. In my opinion, if they didn't care enough about other people's lives to find a safer means of transport than drunk driving, why should anyone else care to help them avoid the inconvenience of taking the bus or walking? Like, I realize they all grew up in an extremely dramatic setting, and the drunk drivers of the group are definitely alcoholics. That doesn't excuse anything in my eyes, though. I've never said anything against this because not my circus, not my monkeys. Why start anything when it doesn't directly concern me? But it's not a dynamic I want anything to do with. Now for the update. I had to make a new account because something went wrong. I just wanted to write this update because lots happened overnight. My boyfriend's family is allowing me to stay with them for a while because my family is absolutely unhinged. My dad decided to show up to my boyfriend's house and cause a scene. I guess my little tantrum worked because he announced that they're not having the party anymore. He also said my brother hates me now, which I don't really care. He has also been charged for those who don't know. An argument started and it was basically like the argument that took place before. He kept saying I wasn't happy for my brother, and I said for the millionth time, I was happy that he came out fine in the end, but celebrating it and enabling his behavior isn't okay. It was absolutely embarrassing, because this was at my boyfriend's house, in front of his entire family and they were trying to calm us down. As you guys know, my best friend since we were toddlers passed away at the hands of a drunk driver a day after she turned 19. That messed me up so bad, to the point where I had to go to therapy for some time. 
And considering that next month will be a year since her passing, this entire situation has hurt me. When I brought this up to my dad, he said, I'm sorry about that, but if it's almost a year, you should be over it by now. I just told him I'll go back to get my things and leave, because they obviously didn't care about how I felt. I'm back at my boyfriend's house now, and they have been comforting me. Nothing hurt me more than my dad telling me to just get over my friend's death, because I've known her my whole life. Anyway, this is just how things are so far. I blocked my parents and brother and everything. Now that I've calmed down a bit and I have tons of support, I feel a little relieved. June 18th would have been her 20th birthday, and June 19th will be a year since some heartless monster took her life away. So I'm making both days all about her, even though she's not physically here with me. Thanks to everyone for the amazing replies. I sympathize with everyone who has lost a loved one slash gotten injured because of idiots who think it's acceptable to drink and drive. I love all of you, and I know my friend is rooting for me from above. Last story. Am I the a-hole for calling my sister disgusting and banning her, my niece, and my mother for my house? The title absolutely makes me sound like a jerk. I apologize in advance for the novella. Part of this is me venting, but I do want some outside perspective on whether or not I've had too strong of a reaction, especially considering there are kids involved. My husband and I are both 23, my sister is 27 and has three kids. My 11-year-old niece, my 7-year-old nephew, and my 1-year-old nephew. My sister broke up with a baby's father and has been struggling some. My mom watches the kids while she works, when the older two aren't in school, and my husband and I have been watching them one day every other weekend. My 11-year-old niece is developing some really bad behaviors that we are trying to offset when we have her by teaching her self-regulation, boundaries, and healthy communication. This past weekend was terrible. My niece was on a level 100 all day and had been mouthing off, etc. My husband took her tablet and calmly told her to go sit in our bed for a timeout. I walked away because I needed a breather, but then I heard my husband yelp. He was red in the face and hunched over, and I could immediately tell that she had hit him between his legs. Apparently, badly enough that he went outside and threw up a short time later. Sorry for the gross detail, but it emphasizes why I'm so upset. Thanks, calm down. When my sister came to get them, I was fixing dinner. The older two were watching a movie, and my husband was holding the baby with an ice pack in his lap. My sister came and I pulled her into the kitchen and told her what happened. I told her that unless my niece's behavior improves, she can't come over. But we could still watch my nephews. Her first response was a snide, she would never do something like that. To which I responded that I had witnessed it. This is where I really got angry. When she couldn't come up with another excuse, she said, I don't like how he is drawing attention to his private area. That's very inappropriate around kids. Referring to the damn ice pack. Before I lost it, I said she was disgusting and that she needed to get her kids things and leave, which thankfully she did. But then a short time later, our mother calls me fuming, saying I'm being an a-hole and overreacting. I told her that for as long as she keeps that opinion before even hearing our side, then she's not welcomed either. I said we can all have a discussion about boundaries and expectations, but until then, don't contact us, especially to ask for help. I really don't think so, but am I the a-hole? Now for the comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole, but your niece's behavior is really alarming, and it will only get worse from here if she doesn't get help. If I were in your situation, I'd ban them until things change. Don't feel like you're overreacting. If your husband is vomiting from the pain, that's a valid reaction, especially if your sister refuses to acknowledge the problem and then gaslight you. Physical attack aside, your niece and sister could land you in trouble with law enforcement or CPS. I honestly would cut them off completely. This right here. Her trying to flip around and insinuate that your husband was being inappropriate with the kids was the start of something. It sounds like the sister comes from a line of manipulative mothers, and her child is the golden child who can't do no wrong. All the while, the kid is actively learning to be manipulative without consequence. And that's difficult to fix, because the first victim of a manipulator is themselves. They think, I am the victim. I can do no wrong. I'm glad Opie seems normal and on their husband's side. You're not even a little bit the a-hole. You're offering free childcare and doing your sister a huge favor. 
Her kid physically attacks your husband in a really ugly way, and your sister tries to attack you and your husband over it? You should decline to watch any of her children anymore, if this is how she's going to treat you. She's taking advantage of you, and utterly lacks appreciation for your free services. Your mom is also an a-hole, and I can see why your sister had a kid at 16 and is massively entitled. I'd suggest drawing some much stronger boundaries with your family. I agree with it so much. It sounds like the sister gets a lot of help from the family and only has the kids to herself two weekends a month, with basically everyone else running to help her. She sounds selfish like she expects everyone to help her. I hope she stops having kids because she's not acting like a good parent. I would be mortified if my kid did that. I mean, the husband still has a nice pack in hours later, and her response is that it's not appropriate to draw attention to that area? Girl, your daughter already did that because of your terrible parenting. Not a hole. Update. Thanks everyone for the support. I've gotten a lot to think about, and I'm reassured that I'm not overreacting. A couple of things to note. My husband was not in the bedroom with her. He was telling her to go to our room for a timeout, which is what we normally do. He is taking off work to go to urgent care this morning because he is still in a lot of pain. I think my sister's allegation is so that she can trick herself into believing she ended babysitting with us, instead of the other way around. Mom's always been more supportive of her, so the more I think about it, the less I'm surprised by how she immediately took my sister aside. I haven't spoken to either of them and don't plan to. Second update. Good, bad, and ugly. The bad is that urgent care sent hubby to the ER, at which point I left work to go join him. One of his testicles was dislocated, but thankfully it didn't ascend too far. With some pain meds, a doctor was able to push it back into place. I was scared at first, because they said surgery would be an option if this didn't work, but thankfully it did. The good is that we are now home and he's feeling much better, but still kind of bruised. I told him lots of internet strangers were invested in the well-being of his manhood, which made him belly laugh. The ugly is, and I'm standing by him on this, he absolutely does not want to give any medical bills to my sister. His point is that she will likely retaliate even worse than just being confronted with what her daughter did. And I agree. So in that sense, we are stuck. I didn't get the full story before, but essentially, when he told her to give him the tablet, she turned away from him and kicked her leg back. He said it got her heel. She's also not little for her age, and I'm just glad it wasn't worse. Boundaries are set. As much as we love the kids, we're just going to have to get okay with not seeing anyone.